Hi, welcome to your 14 day weather forecast. Since my last update, it has continued to be unsettled. So no surprises there, but are there any signs for change as we head through the next two weeks? Well, in a word, I think the answer is yes, but there are quite a few caveats to attach and I'll discuss those as I go through the outlook. So without further ado, I'm going to begin by taking a look at a view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Thursday the 4th of April. And to start off with, it's a very similar picture to what we've become familiar with. Areas of low pressure moving in from the Atlantic, keeping that mixed weather going. Showers, long spells of rain and strong winds at times. Now, through the weekend, the thing to note is there's a very deep and nasty area of low pressure centered to the west of the UK. It brings the potential for windy conditions in all areas, but especially in the west and the north, gales or even severe gales are a risk. I'll come back to that a little bit later on. Continuing the animation and things stay quite mixed. Another area of low pressure moves in through the early part of next week, but then high pressure to the south begins to build and it starts having more influence at times. It leads to an increasing chance, I think, of some drier conditions developing, at least in southern and central regions, and perhaps more so towards the very end of the first week, maybe into the second, but I'll go through that later on as well. Here's the upper air temperature sequence. There's some blue shading there over Scotland to begin with, so some relatively cold air. But as I run this, that quickly gets pushed away. There's a pulse of very mild or warm air, and then the Atlantic flow continues through the rest of the week. At the end here, here is a high pressure building up from the south and some relatively mild or warm air associated with it too. What all that means? in terms of weather down at the ground level. Well, a few charts to illustrate. This is for Friday the 5th. At this point, there's still some relatively cold conditions in Scotland there, single figures, especially over the mountains. It's milder though as you head southwards, 15, 16, 17 in southern and central regions. Moving forwards to Saturday, and this is likely, I think, to be the warmest day of the week, at least in the south. 18 Celsius there being shown in uh, East Anglia and southeastern counties. It could actually be a degree or two higher than that, but much will depend on the extent of cloud cover. By this point, double figures into Scotland and Northern Ireland, so that milder air has pushed northwards across all parts of the UK. But if you notice, there's still showers or long spells of rain affecting some areas. Sunday, temperatures have dipped a little, a couple of degrees down in the south there. It's a showery or wet picture for much of the country. Into the early part of next week and downwards trend there in temperatures has continued. So 13 Celsius being shown as a maximum in the south, just about scraping into double figures there in eastern Scotland. So quite a mixed outlook is being shown through the first week. Here's the Morgrex G chart for London showing forecast temperatures. Just highlighting what I mentioned that the warmest day of the week is likely to be Saturday. This has a few runs in the mix going up to around 20 Celsius. So I don't think we're going to reach 21. Not entirely out of a question though. The other thing to note here is that all of the individual lines are very close together for most of the first week indicating a high degree of confidence in the general temperature trends. But I think it may well be the strength of the winds through the first weekend, which the key factor of the weather. The charts here are from the UKV model, so that's the high resolution one run by the UK Met. On the left, it's midday Saturday. On the right, it's 09 GMT on Sunday. You can see there in the west and northwest and coastal counties at least, gusts of around 70 miles an hour, maybe even a little bit higher in the western isles there on Sunday. Down into central and southeastern parts of England, it's still windy, but 
around 30 to 45 mile an hour gusts, so probably not causing too many problems there. It really is in the west and the northwest where I think the issues are likely. The Mogreps G Ensemble showing wind gusts for London just reinforces the message. Possibly up to 50 miles an hour there. There's a few runs going that high or even just a tad above it, but most of them are around 45 miles an hour uh, mark as the peak. Up to Glasgow, and this shows the stronger winds as we're heading northwest. Some of the runs going up to around 60, most around 55 there on Saturday and Sunday. So it's really the worst conditions are likely to be in the exposed coastal locations of the west and the northwest. So keep up to date with the short range forecasts. Rainfall. Forecast aggregates for days 0 to 5 in millimetres from the ECM and GFS models. The highest totals on both of them in the west, tending to be drier in the central and southeastern parts of England, East Anglia too. Having said that, even in those areas there are significant amounts of rain falling through this period. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day charts, the totals have increased everywhere. Um, especially so there with GFS on the right showing some fairly high totals even in central parts of England, eastern counties too. So I think I'm, I've been talking about a transition to more settled conditions. Here's one of the first caveats. It doesn't look completely dry through the five to ten day period even in central and eastern counties. So it could well be a move towards drier Days becoming more likely, but not completely settled by any means if these charts are indicative. So in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here's the GFS, the high pressure building up from the south. The Canadian model shows something similar, maybe high pressure having even more influence at this point. The German icon, a little bit different, high pressure squashed further down, low pressure areas from the Atlantic still keeping it more changeable or unsettled, especially in the west and the northwest. The ECM, low pressure there to the northwest, close to Iceland, high pressure though, probably having quite a lot of influence there, especially in southern and eastern counties. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, it shows a similar scenario with changeable conditions, most likely in the far north and the northwest. So taking them all together, there's quite a good signal there for high pressure to be having more influence than it has done recently, particularly in the south, maybe the east of Britain too. But it's difficult to say whether it's going to be completely dry and settled and a, a prolonged period of quieter conditions developing or not from these charts. Certainly, though, an improvement, I think many people would say, on what we've been having recently. So, how do things look like developing as we go through the second week? Do the ensemble models support the probability, at least, of a long period of dry weather developing in southern Britain, maybe more settled in the north northwest? Well, let's take a look. Here's the 16 day GEFS plot for. London, upper air temperatures across the top there, well above the 30 year average early on. The thick black line is what indicates the 30 year norm. The thick purple line, the ensemble mean, and really all of the individual runs there staying above the thick black line for the first few days. But as we head forwards, there's a big spread developing there, a wide range of solutions, some very warm runs at this level in the mix, going above 15 Celsius, but also a number of significantly cooler ones some of the runs there dipping down to around minus five. As I say, remember though, these forecasts are for approximately 1500 meters above sea level. Despite that widening spread, the trend is downwards, but even at the end there, the fit purple line, the ensemble mean is staying above the norm. So quite a strong signal there, I think, for reasonably mild or warm air to continue to be aloft over southern England through the second week. What about rainfall? Well, that's shown along the bottom. And there are a continuing uh, number of spikes there showing up throughout week two. So it's, it's pointing towards 
the drier conditions than we've had recently, but that really doesn't say much, does it? Because there has been a lot of rain, but still a chance of it turning wet at times. So not completely settled even in the south, if this is correct. The two meter temperature data tables for London, lots of orange there to start off with, runs going for between 16 and 20 Celsius. There's also some of the darker orange, 21 to 25 Celsius. The trend is downwards after the first few days, but with that said, it's, it still doesn't look too bad in terms of temperatures. The yellows there indicate 11 to 15, and even later on, there's still quite a lot of orange shown in those columns. So the potential for warmer conditions at times, particularly early on. Nighttime lows, six to 10 is indicated by the light green. So that's the lowest category which is appearing through the first few days. The risk of frost therefore is now very low, at least in the south. Up to Manchester, it's a very similar picture to what was shown on the London charts. The number of rain spikes there across the bottom is a little bit greater, I think, but all in all, the trends here are very similar. Two meter temperature data tables also following a similar pattern, albeit as usual, at a slightly low level. So there's less of the orange there in the comms, but still reasonable amounts. Also, a greater chance of some ground frost there maybe returning later on. The dark green shading indicates runs going for overnight lows of between one and five Celsius. Up to Glasgow, and there are some differences here. Although upper air temperatures are above a 30 in norm to begin with, the signal for them to return to the average is stronger than it was on the Manchester and London plots. Risk of rain along the bottom is ongoing, so probably a more changeable picture in general and somewhat cooler than it is further south. And that would fit in with the idea of high pressure areas building up from the south, but the Atlantic continuing to have more of a say in the weather across northwestern parts of the United Kingdom. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow, yellow is there dominating to begin with, but the amount of light green increases as we head through the second week. Also, the overnight lows here are significantly down on the values in Manchester and London, so a much greater chance of ground frost. And later on, there's quite a lot of blue showing up in those columns, those runs going for naught Celsius or lower. So even air frosts are a distinct possibility at times in the north. What about rainfall through this second week? The ECM probability charts here show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on each of the first three days during week two. The orange shading in western areas there in the northwest indicates somewhere between 60 and 90%. So that's a very high chance of significant amounts of rain. The general theme here is for the lighter colored shading to be in central and eastern Britain. It would indicate that the weather's going to be coming in from the west rather than the east generally. And drier conditions therefore more likely in central and eastern counties. The general patterns here stay the same through days four, five and six through the second week. I think again it doesn't look completely dry by any means so although there is a signal for it to become more settled towards the end of the first week and at times through the second week it's not particularly strong at the moment so don't be surprised if there is still a reasonable amount of rain falling through week two. The GEFS mean surface level pressure chart for the 14th of April indicates dry conditions being most likely in the south, wet ones in the north and the northwest. The reason is that high pressure is centered to the south of the UK. Finally, the GEFS mean surface level pressure data table for York. So this is showing trends as we head through week two. And really there isn't a particularly strong signal here. There's still a fair amount of green appearing in the columns on some days. Those are runs going for low pressure. And also a reasonable amount of orange. Those are runs going for high pressure 
1026 to 1040 millibars. But it's really the yellows which are making up the bulk on many days. Quite a mix there. Most of the runs are going to be a little bit above the norm, but still some of those yellow runs are going to be close to or even a little below the average pressure of the time of the year. So I think really what this is saying is that the signal is for pressure to be higher than it has been recently, or at least much of the time recently, but it's still not a strongly high pressure dominated scenario. That could of course change in the coming days. This is just the data which is available to me at the time of filming. So to summarize, week one often unsettled with showers or longer periods of rain, perhaps turning drier towards the very end of the week. The milder conditions in the south quickly spread northwards, but it may well be the strong winds through the weekend, which are the most noteworthy feature of the weather, especially in the north and the west. Week two, dry days are likely to be more frequent than has recently been the case. The greatest chance of them is in the south and the east, and it could also be quite warm at times, particularly through the first half of the period. Nonetheless, there is an ongoing risk of rain. The wettest conditions are likely to be focused in the north and the west, but all parts of the UK could see some rain at times. So there we have it. Signs of a change, albeit a little bit tentative, hence the caveats which I mentioned at the start of the forecast. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, then if you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Remember, of course, to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.